Stuart? Yes. Um, certain locations in this world are uh, known as known to be energetic uh, vortexes or portals. Is there any correlation between us on a personal level um, opening uh, opening ourselves up to receive uh, the energy? Look, there are very powerful places. I've been to them, you know, in all kinds of, you know, in Asia and Europe and. You know, uh, look, I'll tell you a funny story, you know. When I was younger, I used I had a gallery. I was selling, you know, sacred art, Tibetan, Chinese, you know, Indian, Nepalese, you know, Buddhist and Hindu art. And I had all kinds of people would come into the gallery and people would come in and tell me, oh, I'm going to... Uh, the Andes, I'm going to, what's that place in, in England, you know, I mean, I'm going to all these different places. And I would have, I, I mean, it used to happen like, you know, I don't know, four times a month, somebody would, oh, I'm making a pilgrimage to the Andes, I'm going to, you know, somewhere. And I finally got fed up with it. And I wrote down a little thing in my notebook, I wound up in my book, put it in, the most sacred place on earth is wherever you are. <laughs> and I, I just, you know, I just wrote that down. I said, you know, it just came out of me. I got so tired of everybody's going to go to the Andes to get enlightened, to go to Kujaraho to learn about Tantra. You know, I mean, it's, and you know, it's the most sacred place is wherever you are. If you're not open and your chakra system isn't developed, you could be staring Christ in the face. You could be staring the Buddha and you're not going to recognize it. So wherever you are, it's sacred. Life is sacred. What keeps it from being sacred is the fact that we spend so much time in our minds, our emotions and our fear, our insecurity keeps life from being sacred. And, you know, like, you know, in, in one of these little essays I've been writing for my website, I, I put it, you know, it's like taking the mundane and transforming it into the spiritual. When the chakra system is developed inside, the mundane becomes the spiritual, the food we eat, the utensils we use, the brushing our teeth, you know, everything is a gift of God. No, I'm not taking away from the Andes and, you know, I, you know, I was at the pyramids in Mexico. I mean, I've been in, you know, I, I, I was at the pyramids in Egypt, you know, and they're really powerful things, you know? I mean, look, that stupa and Big Indian, you know? I mean, it's, they're powerful things, these things, you know? But, there's a big but here, the most powerful of all, all of these things are metaphors and symbols for a highly developed system inside a human being that is connected to God. And when we develop that kind of system, we don't need stuff like that, you know? We really don't. But everything, I mean, the stupa is, you know, like the seven levels of the chakras in somebody, the same thing with the pyramids. I mean, when I sat in front of the pyramids in Egypt, I, I said, there must've been, you know, people from out of space that came here and entered the bodies of Egyptians and built this freaking thing. It was so powerful and really strong. Did it give me a spiritual life? No. Did I bring to it a, a system inside that was open to receive and recognize the power of that you know, those pyramids, yes. Same thing with any teacher. You could be sitting in front of the Buddha and, you know, be nothing if you're not open to receive what the Buddha. I mean, I've had that with so many teachers in my life, just doing Rudy's work. They didn't even know what I was doing, except they knew it was something deep. And the energy was amazing and it drew out of them extraordinary teachings, extraordinary teachings.
I hope this is clear, you know, it's not the Andes and, you know, pyramids and it's us, it's us. Because if we build that kind of system, whatever we touch, whatever we're around, everything is sacred around us. I mean, Chris was there. Remember that guy, Chris? You know, I'll never forget. Yes. This is really a funny story. I mean, this guy comes in my gallery who I kind of vaguely knew, you know, and he sits down, he starts telling me this whole thing about the harmonic convergence in the Angies. And he lists a whole list of people that, you know, spiritual people that are going to be there. And he wanted me to gather up all my students and bring them to the Angies because they were going to all sit and it was going to transform the world. Never forget that. You know, I'm sitting there listening to this guy. Didn't say a word. Finally, when he was finished, I, I, I said, you know, I have one question. He said, what is it? I said, what happens the day after? <laughs> I do my inner work every single day of my life. I, you know, have classes. I support ashrams. I people i you know what happens the day after well that guy got so pissed off at me oh man he really got upset at me i never saw him again which is okay <laughs> and i have a witness chris was sitting there you know <laughs> listening to all of this So what I'm saying is, yes, there are sacred places. I have been to them. I mean, you know, Kujarah has got to be the most tantric place I've ever visited. Unbelievable, you know? You know, hundreds of gods and goddesses making love in tantric positions. And it's extraordinary. And it's all about the metaphor of the transformation of energy in the sexual area. That's what it's about. But how many people go to Kujarao? Oh my God, look at this. I'll take pictures of all these gods and coupling, you know? <laughs> how do they get into those positions? <laughs> I mean, that, you know, that's what I'm saying. You know, you get a thousand people, maybe one will recognize what the hell really is going on. And to recognize that and to be able to work with it and open to it and receive Shakti and energy from it, you have to have a chakra system that truly is awakened, that allows you to tune into that and take the source of the energy. And, and that energy helps you to grow. It's your gift from God going through whatever it is. Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome, Larry. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? I just have a few announcements to make. One of them is, you know, next Sunday uh, is going to be Time change. The time is going to go back. So, you know, please put it on your calendar. Uh, I'm going to be sending out the uh, email at, a, at, a, at, a, at a, you know, in the morning, but it'll be for 730. But it, actually, it's an hour earlier. You know, so please put it on your calendar. I had people showing up today an hour late to the European class, you know. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? You know, Bob Singh did a sensational job upgrading my website. It's really beautiful now. Thank you, Bob. It's really wonderful what you did. And, you know, there's all these, you know, little essays about Tantra, about a lot of stuff, but now I'm working on the Tantric ones. And if you haven't gone there to see it, 
you know, read it. I would suggest finding time. Take you, you know, 20 minutes of your time and you'll probably come up again or, you know, you'll be able to open to something that might help you in your spiritual growth. <clears throat> Does anyone else have a question? You know, another thing, you know, starting on Tuesday, it, the next the almost two weeks, it's going to be like a retreat here. I mean, we have a schedule of classes that is really blockbuster, you know, I mean, a lot of classes plus the classes online. I'm not including the classes online, just the in-person classes. And it's something that, you know, you all should try to attend, you know, I mean, what the hell, you know? It's available and I, you know, I'm doing it. There are people coming from out of town, not a lot of people. I don't even want a lot of people. I can't fit a lot of people in my apartment here. But, you know, two, three, and a few people from the, this area are gonna be coming. And, and it's gonna be an intensive, an amazing intensive. I mean, I don't know how many, a lot of you went to the retreat I gave up in Stony. It's gonna be like that. It's gonna be that kind of intensive over the next two weeks. So, you know, you should stay in touch. You can ask Jennifer, she's amazing in how she takes care of stuff. It's the most wonderful thing to have her here doing what she does here is amazing, you know? And, you know, and you should stay in touch with her. If you're intimidated about being in touch with me, stay in touch with her. You know, <laughs> I can give you all the information. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question? And also one other thing, uh, look, I don't care if you've had a vaccination, you don't have a vaccination, I'm not interested. Uh, I'm interested in only one thing that before you come to my apartment, you take a test, that's it. So if you're all concerned about having to be vaccinated to be here, that little rule has dropped, I'm not interested. But I am interested in people respecting myself, respecting Jennifer, respecting what goes on here, and people that, and they're willing to just take a test. It takes 15 minutes. And you say, okay, I did a test, I'm negative, and let's go. Let's rock and roll, you know? So, you know, I mean, uh, <laughs> okay. Does anyone else have a question? And if people are worried about money to do this kind of thing, coming here, grow up. Grow up. You know, really, money is just energy. You open inside, you'll learn how to do that. I mean that, you know, grow up. <laughs> and you can always bargain with me. <laughs> I've been in the art business for 30 years, you know, you learn how to bargain, you know. Does anyone else have a question? I would like to ask. Okay, well, God bless you all. Thank you. And I, there'll be class tomorrow evening, and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. And bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. <laughs> Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart.